Okay, I think we can start now. So the last talk in this session is uh, the work from uh, Gia Bulandari and Detlef Plum on verifying graph programs with monadic second order logic. The talk will be given by, by Gia. So whenever you want, Gia. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so today I will talk about uh, verifying graph programs with monadic second order logic. And yeah, the graph programs I uh, we talk about here is the graph programs that use the graph programming language GP2. Uh, and GP2 itself is based on attributed graph transformation rules in the double push out approach. And uh, it works non deterministically and uh, graphs in GP2 can be labeled by a list of integers and character strings. And the nodes and edges in GP2 can be marked by uh, red, green, blue, gray, dashed, or n. And nodes in GP2 graphs may also be rooted. It works for speed up matching. Uh, this is the example of rural schema in GP2. So as usual, we have left-hand graph and uh, right-hand graph. And here the uh, graph can be labeled by a variable. Uh, we have A, B, C, D, and E as far, uh, list variables. And here we can also have a rule application condition uh, as a constraint uh, to further match of the rule. So for example, uh, we can uh, apply the rule as long as possible by using this comment. So if we apply this rule as long as possible to this input graph, then we can find the match for the rule like this, for example, so that we can have this graph and we uh, need to apply the rule as long as possible. So we can apply it again here to result uh, to another graph until we cannot apply the match and uh, the rule anymore. So for the graph programs itself, the verification for the graph programs has been studied by uh, Chris and that left, uh, where they use horse-style proofing system to uh, verify, the, verify the partial and total correctness of graph programs. Uh, in their work, they use E condition and M condition. You, you also have seen it in the uh, crystal, uh, where it is, an extension of nested conditions. However, the E conditions and M condition may not be easy to comprehend by uh, people that are more familiar with standard logic. So for example, if we have, uh, we want to express that all nodes are labeled with an integer, in standard logic, intuitively, we only use one uh, universal quantifier, but in, E conditions, we also have an existential quantifier on top of the universal quantifier we have here. Uh, and for this reason, we prefer to use standard logic to uh, express properties of Jupyter graphs. And in addition, uh, the horse-style proving systems that has been developed by Chris and Dudlock before uh, can only handle programs whose loop bodies and conditions of the branching commands are root self, root self, uh, root set call. So it means that it cannot verify programs with nested loops. Uh, e conditions are limited to specify first order graph properties of Jupyter graphs, as what uh, has been discussed by Chris before. And M conditions can specify monadic second order properties of graphs, but not all GP2 graphs because it's only for non-attributed graphs. So that we need monadic second order formula to express some properties of GP2 graphs. For example, we need monadic second order formula to express by part tightness, connectedness, or existence of a part. So for that reason, we uh, define the monadic second order formulas uh, based on standard logic that can express properties of GP2 graphs. So here basically we have uh, variables which are typed. We have list variables here, and we also have node and age variables in first order. 
logic and we have a second order variables for set of nodes and also set of ages. We also have constants. We have list constants here and also marks, uh, mark constants. And we also have functions. We have label functions and also mark functions. We also have integer functions. Card stands for cardinality. It works for a set of nodes or a set of ages. And we also have predicates like here. And uh, here we use uh, existential quantifier, which are typed based on the variables we use. So uh, it, the quantifiers are typed like this. So we have quantifier for first order node variables, uh, age, first order age variables, first order list variables, and also second order node and uh, set of nodes and set of ages variables. So here we already have the monadic second order formula. Uh, this is the example for the formulas. So for the first one, we can have this formula to express that all nodes are unmarked. This is actually just the first order properties of a graph. And the second one, uh, we can express by a monadic second order formulas. Here we have a cardinality of X. We have a set uh, variables here. So it is a monadic second order formula, not a first order formula. And it expresses that there exists at least two unmarked nodes. Here we can also express the same uh, condition by first order formula, but we cannot uh, express this one, the fourth example, the number of gray nodes is even by first order formula because uh, the evenness of cardinality of a set, it cannot be expressed in first order formula. So this is an example where monadic second order formula is needed. Uh, as what has been talked by Postit, uh, by, by Chris Postit before. Here we use uh, hard triples. So we use hard style verification where we use hard triple CPD, where C and D is pre and uh, post condition. And the, for the pre and post condition, we use post monadic second order formula. And here the triple is correct in the sense of the total correctness, if and only if for every graph G satisfying C, the execution of P on G does not diverge or get stuck. And if the execution of P on G yields a graph H, then the resulting graph must satisfy B. So to uh, have the horse-style proving system, we need an axiom. So for the axiom, we need to construct a strongest liberal post-condition. Liberal post-condition, with respect to a uh, precondition C and a graph program P is a condition that must be satisfied by H, by a graph H, if H is the resulting graph from uh, the execution of P on G. And a strongest liberal post condition is the strongest one among all uh, liberal post conditions. So it implies all other liberal post conditions we have. To construct a strongest liberal post condition over a precondition and uh, given rule schema, here we use the similar approach with what has been done by uh, Chris and Detlef and also by Abel and Peneman by uh, generating a left and right application condition. So basically from the given precondition and rule schema, we uh, obtain a left application condition, and then we shift it to a right application condition to finally have a strongest liberal post condition. And here the precondition and also the strongest liberal post condition are monadic second order formulas, but for the left application condition and right application condition, because they are depend on, uh, because they depend on the left and right hand graph, we call them a condition over graph. So L, ACL is condition over L and ACR is condition over R in the sense that they are uh, monadic second order formula, but we may have a, a node and a node and H uh, identifiers of left hand graph in ACL and node and H identifiers of right hand graph in ACR. 
So to show the construction, I will give you a running example. So suppose we have this uh, rule copy where we delete an unmarked node and we add an two new uh, gray nodes. And we have this as a precondition that say, that expresses uh, that there are at least two unmarked nodes. So uh, from so from the uh, precondition we have here, we first need to find all possibilities of node or age variables in C representing nodes or ages in L and form a disjunction from all possibilities. So here, because we have uh, the node variable X, we only have this one. And for the left-hand graph, we only have one uh, node, which is node one. So X here may represent one or not one. So here where it represents one, we can substitute one to X like this. And if it, not, uh, it doesn't represent one, then we can have this uh, extra constraint. And we disjunct the possibilities. And the next step, we also need to find all possibilities of some nodes or ages in L in the left hand graph being a member of set of nodes uh, represented by a node or age set variables in C. So here we have one in the left hand graph, we have a node set variable X here. So one may uh, or may not be a member of X. So we can see these two possibilities. If we have two uh, nodes here, then we can find all combinations of one and two becoming a member of X or not. So here, because we have one uh, node and one variable, uh, set variables, we can see the case where one is element X and uh, one is not in X. The next one, we can uh, add the dangling condition and also rule schema condition to the uh, formula. So here, the dangling condition is index of one is zero and index uh, out deck of one is zero because it gets deleted. So uh, what we can see here must be the index and out deck of one. And the rule schema condition is true because we don't have any rule schema condition for this rule. Next, we evaluate functions uh, that and Boolean expression we can evaluate in the sense that if we uh, have a Functions where the argument is um, node or age, we can see an L, then we can evaluate it based on the left hand graph. So here we can uh, we have the mark of node one, and we can see here that the mark is none and the in degree of one and uh, out degree is zero, like this. And next, we can do logical transformation into an equivalent form. So here we have none not equal to none which are equals to false, of course. So we can change them to false and both of these to true, like this. And next we can also uh, see this subformula one element of X. We can uh, see that the, the, from the implication we have in the premise for this part, one is element of X, so we can change this one to true, but for this implication, the premise is one is not in X, so we can change this to false, like this. So uh, here we can also change true and false to false, and because we have this junction here, we can just omit this subformula, and the same case with this and this one. So we can have the simplified for, uh, condition, which is the left application condition. Next, from the left application condition, we want to construct the right application condition. So from the left application condition we have, we can change every subformula in the form of x not equal to i for node or age uh, identifiers i in that gets deleted, and change them to true. So here, because one gets deleted, we can change x not equal to one to true. Next, we also need to add restriction so that any node or age variable X does not represent any node or age in R minus K. 
because uh, this formula initially talks about the initial graph, but uh, two and three are uh, only have only exist in the resulting graph. So x must not equal to two and also three. And then for every implication with uh, yeah, uh, deleted nodes or ages i in x, we update the cardinality of x on the right-hand side of the implication. So here we have one element of x, and here we have the cardinality of x. So in the precondition, uh, x that we talked about in the precondition in the initial graph must be different with the cardinality of x must be different with what we have in the result graph because one gets deleted. So it uh, decreased by one. That's why to have the same value, we need to add it by one. And also we uh, need to ignore the subformulas i in x and also i not in x because we don't work uh, with that with them again in the resulting graph, so we change them to true. Next, we do logical transformation uh, into an equivalent uh, into an equivalent form. So here, because uh, we have both true here, so it is equal to the uh, disjunction of these two, which is uh, equal to this one because basically the one above is implied by the one, uh, the one below is implied by the one above. Next, we need to form conjunction with the specification of R. Uh, we only need to specify what the marks of the nodes we have in R and also the labels and also the rootedness of the new uh, items we have. And we also need to form conjunction with the dangling condition with respect to the inverse of the rule so that we can say here because two and three are new nodes so that the in degree and out degree in the resulting graph must be zero. So here we actually already have a strongest liberal post condition, but here we don't have monadic second order formula because we still have a node and age identifier. So we cannot uh, check the satisfaction of this condition in all uh, graphs. So uh, for that reason, we need to change all node and age IDs into fresh variables. So here we have uh, two and three. So we can change them to Y and Z because they are not used before in this formula. So we can change them to Y and Z. So all two change to uh, y and all three change to z. And then we need to uh, add constraint that the two variables are different. Uh, they don't represent the same node or age because we have injective, form uh, injective morphism in GP2. And to have a close formula, we need to bound all three variables we have by, uh, with existential quantifiers. So that we obtain the strongest liberal Post condition with respect to C and the uh, rule schema we have. And we also show that the constructed post condition is a strongest liberal post condition with respect to the given precondition C and a rule schema R. And we denote it by SLP of CFR. And moreover, we also show that we can have a construction of a monodic second order formula that uh, which is a strongest liberal post condition of our uh, precondition C and also a loop free program B. And here we use the uh, construction to for the correctness calculus. So in the calculus, we need an assertion success, which is a precondition that uh, assert the existence of graph H as a result of uh, the execution of, so uh, this is a precondition that must exist if we, if an ex execution of P on a graph G yields a graph. And here we also show that uh, we can have a monadic second order formula 
uh, as a precondition that satisfies this. And but P is only for ELDO free program. And we also need an assertion fail, which is a precondition that says that we have that the program may fail on an input graph that satisfies the precondition. And here we also show that uh, we can have a construction for monadic second order formulas that satisfies this condition, but for on, only for comments, only for iteration comments. And the iteration comment itself is defined like this. So every look free program and non failing comment is an iteration comment. And a comment in the form of CP is an iteration comment if C is a loop free program and P is an iteration comment. And uh, I haven't shown you a, an example where we have a, a common break. So in GP2, we also have a common break here like this. So we, here we also have the predicate break where uh, break CPD is true if and only if for all derivation uh, that yields to break, then the resulting graph must imply B if the initial graph implies C. So like this, if we uh, start with a graph that satisfies C and always out of the loop because, and if we out of the loop because of, of break, then it must always satisfy B. Then, uh, because we talk about the total correctness where we say that uh, the program never gets stuck or diverge, then here we have termination function. This is actually taken from uh, Chris work in his, in his thesis. So a termination function is a mapping from a host graph to natural numbers. And basically it says that when we uh, execute a loop body, then some properties must be decreasing by numbers, the numbers. And this is the correctness proof calculus we use for the verification. This is uh, similar to what uh, Chris have in his thesis, but here we have a uh, more a larger class of programs in here because uh, previously it only works for rule set call. And this is an example. I will not go through this for a time reason. So basically here, I just want to show you that we have a nested condition here and we are able to verify this kind of program. And yeah, this is a simple two coloring graph programs. And here we have a precondition that says the graph is bipartite and all nodes are unmarked and unrooted and all edges are unmarked. So here graph is bipartite can only be expressed by monadic second order formula and we can express it like this. And for post condition, we can express it like this. Okay, and um, this is the proof tree for our case study. I will not go through this for time reason as well. And this is uh, the form, the monadic second order formula we use in the proof tree. And this strongest liberal post condition is what we get from the construction we just showed before. Okay, so the uh, yeah with the verification with the uh, proof proof calculus we can verify a control program P. So control command is a command where the condition of every branching command is loop free and every loop body is an iteration command, and graph is con a graph program is control command if all its command are. Uh, control comments. So basically, we can uh, we can prove uh, we can verify some programs with nested loops. So in conclusion, the con 
we have a construction of a strongest liberal post condition for MSO or triples CPD, where P is a loop free uh, graph program. And uh, also show construction of monadic second order formula success or a loop free program C and also uh, fail for an iteration common P. And proof calculus we have can handle more programs than the existing calculi in uh, Chris and that last word, and including certain nested loops and loop-free uh, programs as branching, branching command. So for future work, we are interested in having theorem improver for implication between assertions. It has been uh, done uh, by uh, Robert, uh, he works on Isabel and also Z3 for the theorem improver, and we also interest with automatic construction of invariance and also these two other points. Thank you.